guys, so I've uh, used double-sided tape to stick the canvas board to the easel and uh, got it at a height that's comfortable and I'm going to start applying the uh, first stage, first layer of paint just to cover all the canvas with the dominant tones of the canvas. This is no detailing, it's just getting colour onto the canvas to set the tonal values for the next level and that's all I'm looking at. So I'm mixing some cobalt blue with some cerulean blue and then toning it down with some white in this top corner the water is lighter and as we come down into the deeper water it gets darker and darker so you're going to see a differing tone as we get deeper so I'm going to start off with a light tone as we're close to the surface and all I want to do is get colour onto the canvas So all this stage is about. We will go over it again. The second stage will be a second layer of paint. That will make these colours more vibrant. Because the first coat always tends to look weak in tonal value as it goes on to the bleached white background of the canvas. So I'm going to go a little darker now of this next application I don't know whether it's showing up on the camera but this area is darker than that first area I'm using a Dega brush, a Dega striper. This one's made by Princeton. Buy these from Blick. This is a quarter inch Dega, number two size, I believe. All right, I'm just going to add a little bit more of the darker paint just to darken this up so I'm adding I'm adding um, more cobalt blue to the mix with a little bit of phalo blue just to darken it up Just going around the coral stone there. Just it doesn't matter if you go over the lines, like on a colouring book. Imagine you've got your, your lines now. I showed you how to get create your own sketch easily if you're not sure about drawing, if you're not confident with your ability to draw something, copy it from a photograph. I've just showed you one of the simple methods to enable you to do that. And think of it like a colouring book. You've now got your penciled in sketch, the black lines in the colouring book. And it's just down to you to fill between those lines with colour. Think of it simply like that. Don't allow yourself to get overwhelmed by looking at finished paintings and thinking geez how did that guy paint that or how did she paint that that's insane I could never do that yeah you can everyone could do that I'd never painted in my life till I retired and decided to take this up as an hobby and I surprised myself I believe 
didn't think I could do it, even though I always wanted to do it. I had the burning desire to give it a try all my life. So, um, it was always on my bucket list. And then finally I said, okay, I'm going to give this a try. I've got more time on my hands. I want to start painting. And uh, so that's what I did. And I haven't looked back since. And it's a really enjoyable hobby to have. It's um, cathartic, therapeutic. Helps you to relax, switch off from everything, the stresses of life. Hopefully, when you reach retirement age, you've got rid of all the negativity. You've learned how to remove negativity from your life and just keep positivity in your life so you can relax more. I think it's more important the older we get to be able to relax because the older we get, our health isn't as it was when we were young people. And we can't do the extremely physical active things we used to do. I've just mixed more dark, darker paint. Oh, some bits on the brush there, I don't know where they came from. You can see this is a lot darker now. Alright, I'm getting bits on the brush from somewhere. I don't know where they're coming from. That's frustrating. So the Dega striper brush, if you use it that way, you get a nice broad stroke. If you just use the edge, you can get a nice thin line stroke. Good for going around edges like that. Okay, I'm going to put a little more paint, blue paint onto my uh, palette. I'm going to do a new mix of colour. is coming from. It's frustrating. Alright, if you go over an area that shouldn't have paint on it, I just use a Q-tip just to rub off. paint like that because the paint stays wet I'm mixing it with a medium the Windsor and Newton impasto which will help this dry within 24 48 hours so until it's dry you can manipulate the paint you can blend it and you can remove it from surface like I just did so don't worry about the paint going on to other areas and you can just remove it. And when I've covered all the blue area, the water, I'll be getting a soft brush just to blend the tones. It's not difficult, is it? Now you're watching me, how I start from a bare canvas to where we are now. What's to be frightened of and be unsure about? It's like doing a children's colouring book. I remember if 
you don't get the exact tone that matches to match the photograph that you're using as reference on your last stage when you're doing final finishing detail you can add glazes a glaze is basically just your colouring you're adding the colour to a medium a tra that makes the paint transparent so you're basically adding like a wash over the top and you can just do some tonal washes, glazes just to change the tones to more like the way you want them so we shouldn't be stressing out at any stage what can go wrong and even if it doesn't resemble the paint the photograph but it looks similar and you enjoy the process you enjoyed the process and you like the way it looks even though it doesn't look quite like the photograph then you've got success you've achieved something you've never achieved before and like everything else in life it's a learning curve practice makes perfect so the more times you do this never get disheartened the moment you've picked up a canvas done a sketch and started applying paint that's success you made a start you haven't failed because think where you were you were procrastinating all your life never doing it and now you're doing it and now you're like well I can do this and I am going to get better I've just proved to myself that I can put paint on a canvas and oil paints if you use oil paint like I prefer because it blends beautifully and I like the colour tone, the values of oil paints compared to acrylic. So, sorry, um, I was just mixing, so I lost my concentration there. Um, yeah, so what's to worry about? Why were you worrying about? And feeling that you're not good enough that you can't do it all right mix a bit more paint running out of paint you'll find that you will use a lot of paint but it goes fast that's why I bought the 200 milliliter tubes when I started I used small 30 milliliter tubes I've got a starter kit and uh, my first couple of paintings I used just the small tube starter kit because I, I didn't want to invest a lot of money in a large easel professional easel etc and professional quality paints I just used a starter set just to give it a try see how I felt and if I like the result, then I know I'd stick to it. And then, because um, I liked it, then I started investing into the larger 200 milliliter tubes. Because I know I'm going to do a lot of oil painting and that's what I So, my favourite paints are the Windsor and Newton Artist Oil Colour, professional quality. Uh, great paints big tubes and if you compare them to the starter set I got they were the 30 milliliter tubes see the difference but this is painting number 35 so I'm um, doing a lot of painting so it's worth the investment for me and oil paints take years to go off in a tube the last years and years so if you know you're going to be doing a lot of painting 
it's worth investing in the larger tubes because they work out so much cheaper. You know, you might pay seven dollars for a 30 mil tube but for a 200 mil tube like this you'll only pay like 26 28 dollars so definitely worth the investment we're getting close to completing all the water areas So very soon I'll be blending these colours together, these different tones. Just going around a little fish there. These sharks tend to attract a lot of fish. And some of these fish will cling on to them. And uh, feed off them. So from here on guys, I'm just switching over to time lapse, speed up the video. Uh, so I'm condensing um, the last, about the last six hours of painting into this 30.
guys, I'm back from lunch and now I'm going to start working on the coral. Over here it's darker so I'm going to do this, this is like a bluish green tone and then this is pinks and burgundies and yellows and greens, this is very colourful, this one but one in the background is shades of a blue, deep blues and sort of greens, greeny blues. Let's start with this area first, working on deep tones.
All right. Hope you can see the way it's going to be. How it's going to look. That's it for me for round one. Level stage one, first layer of paint. You've seen how I created the sketch. And now you've watched how I block in the first layer. Where the principle of this stage is just the block in the dominant tones all over the canvas. Next stage, blocking in detail. Stage 2 will begin in about 48 hours. In the meantime I'll get back to either my Spitfire flying over the English Channel and the White Cliffs of Dover painting or I'll get back to the sunrise over the uh, Smoky Mountains. Smoky Mountain Sunrise. So guys, thanks for watching. If you stuck it out this long, really appreciate it. And I hope it's giving you some encouragement, incentive to want to give it a try. Now that I've just shown you how easy you can create a sketch on a canvas and uh, how easy it is just to block in the dominant tones. Give it a try. You never know, you might love it just like I do after I tried for the first time. Alright guys, that's it from me for today. I'm going to clean up and start getting ready for dinner and I'll be back tomorrow but I'll see you in 48 hours when we start stage 2 level 2 on this one till then guys thanks again cheerio have a good night goodbye